I'm going to go over a few problems from the Math 3 Unit 1 Worksheet 5, starting with number 1. Uh, here we're talking about domain restricting or domain restriction graphing. And we're asked to sketch the restricted function and state the domain and range in the interval notation in interval notation of the restricted function. Okay, so uh, number one we have f of x is x squared, that's the apparent graph of the quadratic. Uh, we're asked to find f of negative 2. So if I plug in a negative 2, I get negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. So that's telling us that when x is negative 2, y is 4. So that's a point that we go through. And without the restriction, let me, let me just graph this without the restriction. So we know that this thing looks like this. So it goes through 0, 0 because it's the parent graph. There's no translations. Um, it goes through negative 2, 4. And then so that's the left half of the U shape and positive 2, 4. So this is without the restrictions. Um, don't write this down yet because I'm going to be erasing some stuff. So now it wants to restrict our domain. And the domain is in interval notation here saying x is going to be greater than negative 2. So here's negative 2. I, I'm just highlighting the part of the domain that we want. So anything above that yellow highlight we want to keep. Anything that's not above it, we want to get rid of. So you get your eraser out and say, OK, I don't want, you know, I want uh, just this part. So I'm keeping the arrow on the right side because it's going to keep on going all the way to the right. But I got rid of the arrow and anything to the left of negative 2 on the x-axis. But notice also, it says x is greater than negative 2, not equal, so we should have, instead of a filled in point here, let me fix it, we should have an open circle there. Meaning it's a boundary, but it's not equal at that point. And there's our rest restricted graph. Let's take a look at number 6. 6 is also a parent graph. Um, the, uh, the linear absolute value, you get that V shape. If I plug in negative 1 into that, I get the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, which tells us that this goes through the point negative 1, 1. And uh, first I'm going to graph it again without the restriction, have a sense of what, what I'm looking at here. So goes through 0, 0, negative 1, 1. It's a V shape. This is the left side of the V. Here's the right side of the V. So that's with no restriction. Um, and then here, this is a little funny the way it's written. It says, uh, graph the function if x is not equal to 1. In other words, graph it everywhere else but at negative 1. So at negative 1, that's the only part I don't want. So we need to put a hole in our graph. So instead of having a solid point there, I need to put a open circle right above it, which is our hole. And uh, everything else is good. Leave everything else. So just by putting that hole in our graph, meaning so that the graph exists everywhere except at negative 1, and there we have it. Now I am forgetting one part of the instruction, and I need to go back and do that. And that is to state the domain and range in interval notation. So we're going to go back to 1. Domain of this first one starts at negative 2, goes to infinity. Don't include the negative 2 because we have that open circle, meaning it's not part of our graph. By the way, these two are the same. One's in interval notation, the second one is in um, inequality notation. The range, 
the lowest point is at zero and it hits zero, the highest point is infinity. Number six, a little more difficult to think through for the domain. Domain, how far left? Well, there's actually two, two intervals here we need to consider. We have the interval from negative infinity all the way up into this hole here. Okay, And then the second interval is going to start back up at that hole and then go all the way to infinity. So there's a break in our graph, and so we're, this is going to reflect in two intervals. So the first one goes from negative infinity up to 2. And the second one starts back up at 2 and goes to positive infinity. And when you have two intervals, and we want to include both of them, and so we put a union sign between them. So that's the fancy notation. These two things mean the same thing. The x not equal to negative 1 would be our inequality notation, whereas the, uh, the thing we just wrote would be our interval notation. For the range, the lowest point is at 0, and it's included. The highest point is infinity. And you may be wondering, well, why didn't we create two intervals here? Because there's a break in the graph. Well, yes, there's a hole in the graph on the left side, but there's not on the right side. So at the height of 1, we're, we're taken care of by this, I'll put an arrow there, by the point on the right side. So there's no break in the, in the range where there is a break in the graph for the domain. Skip now to 11. 11's exponential. And we're asked to find f of 3, which is 2 to the third power minus 1. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So this is 8 minus 1, or 7. So from that, we get the point 3, 7. Because we plugged in a 3, we got a 7 as an answer f of negative 1, we get 2 to the power of negative 1. We're going to have to remember negative exponents, minus 1. Any, you know, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. That's when you get your fraction. And 1 half minus 1, I'm going to change 1, that's 1 over 1. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. And so I get 1 half minus 2 over 2. Get that common denominator so you could subtract the fractions. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 half. So second point, we plugged in a negative 1. We got negative 1 half. All right. So I'm going to graph this without the restrictions first. Notice the translation, we've been dropped down one. So we got our vertical asymptote, sorry, horizontal asymptote, dropped down one. Parent graph point was at zero, one, now it's at zero, zero. And then we have a couple points we know this goes through three, seven. Right here. And negative one, negative one half. And so we know this looks something like that without the restriction. Now let's take a look at the restriction. It says negative one less than x less than or equal to three. The x is between negative one and three. So we're only looking at values between negative 1 and 3, right there. So everything outside of that we need to erase. So I don't want 
this part right here. Okay, and then I need to point out one more thing. Notice um, it's less than or equal to three, so I color it in at the point above three. Whereas it's just x is just greater than negative one, so I open circle above the negative one. Uh, the domain goes from negative 1 to 3. Notice parentheses where it's not equal and bracket where it is equal. The range, negative 1 half to 7. Again, parentheses and bracket. Number 13, uh, the instructions for 13, I'm not finding, let's see here. Well, we're given, and I think we can infer what the instructions are here. We need to write the equation and the restriction. I'm going to start with the restriction. Let's notice. Restriction is only on the x or the domain, so we're only thinking from here to where it stops. So we're going from negative 3 to 1. So we want all x values between negative 3 on the left and 1 on the right. And then we got to decide should it be less than or equal? Notice. These are colored in circles. They're small, but they're colored in, so we want the equal signs with these. So that's the restriction. Now for the equation. Uh, this is a V shape if it were extended, right? And um, it's been translated. The parent graph would be over here. And it's been moved to the left one, two, down one. So left two, down one, and so I'm going to do a little scratch work here. We know it's y equals something times x plus two, because we moved left two, minus one, because it moved down one. And I know this goes through this point here at negative three, negative two. Don't use the vertex point. Plug this negative 3 in for x, plug in negative 2 for y, and we can use this to solve for a. Remember here, don't subtract negative 1 and negative 1. Uh, add 1 to both sides. and then divide by negative 1. So a is 1. So now we have our equation. y equals, and y is just your f of x, so we don't have to write y equals. But everything after we want to write. So we have the 1 times the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. And I didn't write the 1 in front of the absolute value sign because 1, it, it, we usually don't write it there. Um, we could, but 1 times any number, as you know, is that number. So uh, we just, that's, that's our answer to 13.